Hey, what's up everyone? Wanted to share some quick tips, common flaws that we see whenever we're dealing with the kettlebell swing. All right, so the first thing that we see common flaw in a swing is people have more of a squatting swing than a hinging swing. So Hunter's gonna show you a little bit of both. He's gonna pick up the, that kettlebell and do more of a squat position, which you don't want. It's not as efficient. Go ahead and get it going. And while he's going, you can see that a good indicator is the shin bone is going to move forward, the knees are gonna move forward like he's squatting. So instead, we want him hinging where there's very little movement, forward movement at the knee, the shin stays vertical, and now you're in a hinge position. Next little tip is we wanna keep this kettlebell nice and close. Let's check it out. So right now, his swings, you'll see there's a gap between him and the bell. The farther away that the bell is from his hips, the more inefficient this movement becomes. Uh, so as coaches, we're looking for you to keep that bell nice and close. So switch to a nice and close position. It's gonna be wrapped around close to his body as possible to keep for a smaller arc pattern and a more powerful and efficient swing. All right. All right guys, another common flaw that we see is when athletes don't open up their hips or their knees. So they come up to the top position, but the knees and the hips haven't quite fully extended. So let's take a look and let Hunter show us a few of that. So right now, the, the, the kettlebell swing pattern looks great. He's in that Russia swing position, but you'll see there's still a slight bend. This is a very common mistake for people, still a slight bend. So I'm gonna ask Hunter to fully lock out at the top, and ideally he's gonna lock out his knee and his hip joint at the same time. So lock and brace, lock and brace, bracing that belly. Okay. All right, this one is pretty common when it comes to a lot of barbell movements, and you hear us talk about it, it is the early arm extension. So what do we mean by that? When he goes into that swing and he comes out of it, the arm, the forearm, is gonna be disconnected from the hips a little earlier than he completely stands tall, okay? So notice the gap between his forearm and his hip bone as the forearm leaves the hip before he's fully extended the hip. So let's check it out. Early arm extension. You'll see the forearm leaves the hip, still a lot of space, and he hasn't quite fully extended. So ideally, he's in full extension, and at the top of his extension, only after the knees and everything extend, does the forearm leave the hip because the hip is pushing the forearms away. All right, the last piece we're gonna leave you with is how to start the movement and how to end the movement. So he's been doing this the whole time. So for those who uh, didn't catch it, let's talk about it. He's gonna get set up in a triangle position. That means if your left foot and your right foot is right here, the bell is right here in front of you, set up in a triangle position, okay? From there, the cue that we like to use is hike the football. He's gonna take it, use his lats, drive it into his hip, and then start his hinge. So watch this. And then notice that when he was done with his last rep, he brought it back to his hips and then brought it back to the floor. So he hiked the football to start and then he reverses that pattern to bring it home. So that's it guys, just some tips for you next time you see kettlebell swings.